So we have four. Um, hi, everybody. This is my virtual <laughs> gavel. Um, uh, OK, um, I, opening the, um, what's the date? June 27th, PVUSD school board meeting. And um, we will be going back into closed session. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, what we're, we're, we will be discussing. Oh, I thought that you I thought we handed it to you. No. Yeah, well, we are televised, though. So I'll go by memory to start with. Student expulsions, um, classified appoint appointments. Thank you. Okay, expulsion, referral, certificated public employee appointment, employment, classified public employee appointment, employment, uh, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, and leaves, negotiations, update, real property, um, approving a final compromise and release agreement, um, and that is item 2.7 as well as 2.8. So are there any speakers to any of those items? None. No speakers? Okay, we will go to closed session and reconvene at 7. Everyone take their seats. I'm going to call the meeting to order. <laughs> what are we missing? Okay. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm calling this meeting to order the June 27th, 2018 PVOSD school board meeting. And I want to, again, welcome everybody. And um, we will start with 3.1, which is our Pledge of Allegiance. Since Trustee Your Hero is already standing, Thank I will you. ask him to lead us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please rise. Ready. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Trustee Yihiro. So again, I want to welcome everybody. I know we have a um, uh, not quite a full house in the summertime. This is typical, but we do um, appreciate those who are here um, to be a part of our process here. Um, we will just go ahead and go into superintendent's comments. Thank you. Well, we are busy preparing for the 2018-19 school year. We want to continue to build on the positive momentum and continue to do good work for our students, staff, parents, and community. So estamos ocupados preparándonos para el año escolar 2018-19. Queremos con continuar construyendo sobre el impulso positivo y continuar haciendo un buen trabajo para sus estudiantes, personal, padres, y la comunidad. 
We will be having our district-wide breakfast on Monday, August 13th, 2018 from 7.30 to 8.30 at Watsonville High School to welcome back our staff. And we hope that everyone puts that on their calendars so that they can come speak to the staff. So tendremos nuestro desayuno del distrito el, el lunes 13 de agosto del 2018. Um, empezando a siete y media hasta las tres y media en la secundaria de Watsonville para dar la bienvenida a nuestro personal. Esperamos que todos lo anoten en su calendario para hacer la oportunidad de hablar um, con el personal. So we have identified the date of our first state of the district breakfast. As you know, I have released the state of the district report the last two years that I've been here. So in two months, I'll have been here two years. Um, I wanted to start a new tradition of bringing in the community to hear about our work. And so we sent out the following save the date information. We'll be having the breakfast at the city of Watsonville community room right next door on Friday, October 26, 2018 from 8.30 um, to 9.45 a.m. And we hope to see you all there. Um, so también hemos identificado la fecha de nuestro primer desayuno del um, estado del distrito. Como saben, he publicado un reporte del estado del distrito los dos años que he estado aquí. Y en dos meses voy a estar aquí dos años. Queremos comenzar una nueva tradición de invitar a la comunidad para escuchar sobre nuestro trabajo. Enviamos la siguiente invitación de igualar la fecha. Tendremos el desayuno en la sala comunitaria de la ciudad de Watsonville, que está a este lado, el viernes 26 de octubre de 2018, empezando 8 y media hasta las 9.45 de la mañana. Esperamos verlos a todos allí también. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, 3.4 governing board comments. Um, Reports on standing committee meetings. Um, Maria, I'll start with you and then just go right down the line if that's okay. Sure. I'll, let's see. So, I think yesterday we had our first meeting um, in quite a while in yes. person uh, for the Pajaro Valley Education Foundation. So, now we have established a date for our retreat as a board in which we hope to planned out what next year is going to look like, including uh, fundraising strategies and programs we will be focusing on. So I'm very excited about that. I've also been meeting with uh, several parents uh, around bullying issue in the community and just gathering their feedback um, just for the past couple months. Thank you. <coughs> I don't um, have a whole lot to report, except I've been doing a lot of outreach to teachers all over the county, and I think we've managed to capture a few good ones. So I want to thank our HR department for doing such a good job of recruiting, and I'm looking um, forward to our next school year. Thanks. I don't have as much to say because it's summertime, but I actually go to a actually have a board committee that meets all summer long, and that is the um, Migrant Head Start Committee, because it's a migrant committee, obviously, and this is their, summer is their big migrant season, so um, I will be going to meetings where much, much larger meetings than we've had, because um, we have our policy committee, but this is with um, parents from every um, every every section um, of the community um, our parent our parent committee which is a much larger committee which we which now instead of doing it in the second floor we'll meet in the um, school board room at the district so I'm gonna be doing that all summer <laughs> the only thing I I did um, I actually went to Sacramento to visit my daughter, and I just want to say this about it. I actually did a couple days of solar, which is what I do for work and in Sacramento. And it was um, from 104 degrees to 107 degrees the whole time I was there. So I was very, very grateful to be from Watsonville. <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, well, after um, living at uh, 21 Rogers, Rogers Street for the last uh, 50 years, I uh, sold the house yesterday and, in, and, I, and actually uh, April 6th moved into Valley Heights, which, which the address is uh, 925 Freedom Boulevard. And if you check on the county elections, you will see that I am still in the same district. So <laughs> that part doesn't have to change. But I just wanted that out in front because there's some rumors out there that, I, that, that I'm out in the area, et cetera, et cetera. So, <laughs> you are. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, help move uh, 50 years <laughs> of uh, stuff. stuff. Come on over. Wow. You're no still going no problem. <laughs> Trustee Ursino? I have nothing. Trustee Acosta? Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And I'm sorry I didn't say this earlier, but. Um, I think uh, as a board, you know, I think I'll speak for everybody that our hearts and minds are with the children that have been separated from their families um, at the border. And as a community, there are several efforts and some very brave people that are going down to witness what's going on, including somebody who used to work in this district, Andrew Goldenkranz. There will be on um, June 30th a rally in March that will be held um, from 10 to 12 p.m. in downtown Santa Cruz to protest the current administration's inhumane and cruel treatment of immigrant families at the U.S. border. Um, and so I in would invite all of us um, to, to come out wherever uh, marches are held. I'm sure there'll be one here in Watsonville because this, is a national, this will be a national day of protest. So um, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, so just a short r report on PVPSA. Um, we are, we're currently getting a new roof. It's going to take a little longer than we thought because there's bats in the, in the belfry, I guess you could say. Um, so that is, is being done. We were actually struggling to find funding for that because that's quite an expensive project. And through a generous donation from the Monterey Peninsula Foundation, correct, right, Monterey, um, they said, here's $50,000 for your roof. So that was really, really fabulous. We're really super happy with, with that support. And really, in general, um, PVPSA is doing really well in, in capturing grant funds so we can expand services for our students and families. And we're keeping a really healthy fund balance, which has not always been the case. So um, we're really happy to see that. So I just want the board to know that that was happening. Um, and then also recruitment efforts. Um, we are down to 40 vacancies. This time last year, we were at 150 teacher vacancies. So um, great work uh, from the human resources leadership and staff. Um, and then also, uh, thank you, Kim, for mentioning about the separation of families at, at the border. I don't know if anybody saw the op-ed by the superintendents of our county. Um, I read that, and it, it actually triggered something for me. Um, Michelle had mentioned um, the fact that we're mandated reporters for um, neglect and abuse of children. Um, so I took that, and I looked up the... Uh, the addresses of three of the detention facilities, one in Brownsville, one in Homestead, Florida, one in San Diego, and I found the nearest child welfare office, and I wrote letters to all three of them saying that I suspected child neglect and abuse in these facilities, and I was asking for an investigation to be opened. So um, it may not go anywhere, but I feel like just that symbolic um, act, um, hopefully, Maybe others would do it. I actually put it on Facebook, too. So um, it felt good to do that. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference, but it really felt good. So thank you for triggering that. Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. So that concludes my comments. Um, we're at item 4.1, approval of the agenda. And um, I would ask anyone who makes the motion if we can uh, move um, item... 9.7 to right before 9.5, those were out of order on the agenda. 
Um, I'll move approval of the agenda. Moving item, say it again, Leslie. 9.7 to before 9.5. We'll move item 9.7 before 9.5. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Okay. And uh, visitor non agenda items, uh, 5.1. Thank you. <laughs> approval of the minutes. Uh, so we're at 5.1. Approval of the minutes for the June 13th, 2018 school board meeting. I move approval. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll abstain. 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 You weren't here. Okay. It, you weren't here, right? Was that okay? Um, so that was all in favor. I got ayes. Any opposed? We have two abstentions, so 502. Thank you. 520. 520. Thank you, Kim. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now 6.1 visitor non agenda items. I think we have one speaker. We do. Bill Beecher. Good evening. Um, I wanted to share an experience that I had uh, this last couple weeks. Uh, my neighbor's children, a young, a young girl who's I think in the sixth grade and her younger brother, uh, were getting ready to go off to uh, science camp. And I was walking my dog and I was, they were thrilled and I was thrilled for them because, as you know, I'm, I'm from the science area. And uh, as I'm walking my dog, I started thinking, wow. I live in a privileged area where probably most of the children go to science camp. Then I started thinking, but what about the Watsonville area where people aren't as privileged, they don't have the money? How many of the kids down here are going to science camp? Probably not a lot. I think that we, and you specifically, we need to find a way to improve how we send our kids, the, le the less privileged kids, to science camp. Because as I've commented in the past, kids do better at science than they do at math or English. And so it's a hook. It's a way of getting the kids interested in wanting to be at school because it's fun. It's relevant. So how can we do that? That's a challenge. Do we find other funds? And how do we do that without creating equity issues for the Aptos area, which we've had uh, a problem with in terms of technology. But now we've got a reverse situation where we need to do something for the kids down here. Uh, second item, talking about the children on the border. Uh, one of the things that has not been reported well is yes, there's 2,500 uh, kids who've been separated from their families. But there's another 10,000 who've come with no parents. What the heck are we going to do with them? That's even a bigger problem. I, I disagree with separating uh, children from their parents. But we've got a bunch of children that have no parents, and they're here. What do we do about them? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay. No more speakers, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, item 7.1, or 7.0 employee organization comments, 7.1 PVFT. Do we have a representative? Nope. Uh, CSEA. You could state your name too, thanks. Alejandro Madi, and I'm the labor rep for CSEA. Uh, well, we were going to save most of the comments for the item when we're going to ratify for the ratification of the TA. But I can quickly, uh, the members are on their way here because we just voted on the ratification. So that's why I'm here first. But, you know, I can speak quickly on their behalf and say that overall for 2017, 2018, we had a really good and productive year with PVUSD. And in part, it has to do with the relationships that we have with the superintendent and with the assistant superintendent for human resources, where 
we've been able to, whenever there, was, there were issues that came about, we were able to talk about it and find solutions to those issues. And I think that I can speak on behalf of the membership in saying that a lot of our members have feel very happy with, with the way that the relationship has improved compared to prior years in the past. And so I want to thank the board because in many areas you also supported a lot of the different things that we brought to the table. And, and I think it was a very productive year. And, you know, there's no secret that today the Supreme Court issued a ruling that ha is going to have a ripple effect throughout the country. And what's important at the end of the day is not just the relationship that we have with the board and with the community, but also the fact that what we do at the, at the end is that we empower our members not just to speak when they're at work and to become leaders at work, but also to be leaders in the community. For them to, when there's elections, that they go out and vote, when there's issues at work, they go and represent their coworkers. That is the essence of what the labor movement does. And even though today, you know, we lost the battle, it doesn't mean that we lost the fight. You know, it, the fight continues, we're, we'll continue to fight, and we hope that, we're not saying, you know, come and join us in the fight, but we hope that we, we can have your, your support in, in, this, in this upcoming landscape that, that we're facing. So overall, just wanna say thanks to everyone. It was a really good year and hope to continue that relationship. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. President DeRose, can I, can I get clarification? PVFT is not here tonight? Yes. That is the Correct. first time in my seven year career on the board that that has ever happened. That has ever happened. Is everybody, I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's okay. I mean that, honestly, I hope everybody's okay. Is that what's going on? Okay. Here's some CSEA people. Yay! Yay for CSA! Welcome. Hello, CSA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they just came. It's been a long meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, item 7.4 CWA. Do we have any? I'm sorry, PAVAM is 7.3. Do we have a representative from PAVAM? PVAM? No? CWA? Okay. So item 8.1, approve measure L bond financial and performance report. And this is a report by Joe. So this evening we have our uh, district auditors that will provide a brief overview of, of, of our measure L uh, bond program and our financial performance audit report for year ending June 30th, 2017. Uh, and I'm pleased to uh, confirm there are no findings in our audit. So, and with that, okay. I'll hand it over to our district auditors. Hi, thank you for being here. Good evening. Um, I am the um, auditors for 2016 and 17. So I will be presenting this uh, bond report. Um, today I also brought Ama over with me um, since because I'm six years with the district already. According to the, 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 the echoes, we need to rotate it out. So Ama will be the subsequent auditors. And he, he is also with the VTD, but um, he is um, auditing starting seven, uh, 17 and 18 fiscal year. So after I presented this report, I'll have Amar introduce himself for you, um, to you. So for 2012 Major L, this is the result of the election in 2012. An authorization amount is 150 million. As of today, it's already issued, uh, 115.7 million has been issued. This report, um, the package, there's two reports. Uh, the first, last two pages is the performance audit report and then before it's um, the financial statement. The financial statement is presented fairly in all material respect. There's no audit adjustment and there's no findings. 
For the performance audit, usually we go into further and pull out all the invoices or a majority of the invoices, and we take a look at and see if the spending is according to the bond language. And we didn't find any exceptions as well. Okay, and then I'll have um, any questions on the bond. Okay, so I'll have Ahmad uh, introduce you. Yes? I, just, I have a couple of questions. Just for um, clarity's sake, I know what you mean, but for the pub general public, can you tell us exactly what you mean by there are no exceptions? That means that we didn't find, uh, for the sample we selected, we didn't find any uh, the expenditures actually is spent uh, not in compliance with the uh, bond language when the voters vote for the, the bond. So if the bank say we are going to spend on this item and we make sure the expenditure is actually spent on what they say they are going to spend, it's not on something unrelated. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, I was actually here about seven years ago. Um, uh, I will be the uh, successor partner on this job. I know this is a non-agenda item. The agenda item that you have today is uh, related to the bond. Uh, basically, it's an audit, ensuring that the expenditures are in compliance with the ballot language, ensuring that the district segregated the funds for Prop 39 from the district funds, and therefore you see a couple of opinions in there, assuring the public, assuring management that uh, uh, the uh, funds are segregated and properly accounted for and the expenditures are in compliance with the ballot language with what the voters had voted on. Um, I will be the uh, successor partner on the 2018 audit, which would include the bond and the district as well. Um, and with that, I'll be more than happy to take any questions. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so is this report going to be in writing and out in the public? Uh, yes, it typically gets uh, posted on the district's website. Um, uh, so it is an, uh, publicly available on the district's website. Um, it doesn't get really filed with regulators. This is just an, a requirement by law, by Proposition 39. Uh, that uh, an independent auditor, external auditor, would look at the expenses and would look, would look at the fact that the funds are segregated from the district's funds. So, 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 so from a political nature with the upcoming elections, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's uh, sure to be some questions about uh, whether or not we use the funds properly and what your report is going to say, everything is okay. That's correct. The very last page of that report does say how big the sample size is, and we do this on an annual basis. So since the passage of Measure 12 back in 2012, we've been auditing roughly 80, 90 percent of those expenses. I know it's a significant coverage that you see in there, but when you talk about construction, a few invoices would just give you 90 percent of the total of the annual expenditure amount. But yes. Since 2012, we've been auditing the Measure L expenditures and the Measure L financial statements, and they should be publicly available on the district's website. Okay. So did you uh, make this report to the uh, Bond Oversight Committee? I believe it does go to the Bond Oversight Committee. Uh, yes, it does, and I did present it to the bond. At, in Would February. you speak into the microphone because we are televised? Oh, yes, I you. did present it, this report uh, to the Oversight Committee in January, back in uh, actually back in February. Okay, thank you. And there are other areas we're going to be proactive is um, posting the report on our Measure L website and then also looking at highlights for our bond program as we go through our year. Um, after our summer projects are complete, we want to highlight the projects that are completed, but then also uh, uh, promote the report of no findings in our financial audit. So just want to make sure that we promote that and get the community awareness. Okay, thank you. Very good, very good news, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So will this uh, report be shared specifically with the sites who had improvements uh, with the Measure Elbon money? Yes, so the report will be accessible to um, 
our school site councils, uh, community members, and specific to the sites that have projects. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay, so this was a report and discussion item only, so no action is necessary. Thank you, and thank you to the Bond Oversight Committee um, for, for keeping us on track. <laughs> yeah, there you and go. And with no findings, There's and I did notice those last two pages, schedule of findings, they're blank pages. Yes. So that's what yes. we want to see. Thank you. I have to list them up, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're on to action items now. Um, this is item nine on the agenda. And these first three, 9.1, 2, and 3, we, at our last meeting, we had public hearings um, where questions and, um, and answers were, were done. And I believe, was there any follow-up questions between then and now that anybody had about these items? Um, Trustee Orsino and I, um, I provided him an update at his request. Okay. Except for that, that was all that occurred. All righty, so item 9.1, and I just scrolled down without trying to, sorry, is final approval of the 2017 through 2020 um, LCAP. So I will entertain a motion. If someone uh, I'd like, like to make a motion to improve our 2017 through 2020 local control accountability plan. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, so Kim and Maria, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 7-0, seven, seven thank you. Um, 9.2 is our eighteen nineteen budget adoption, and I will entertain a motion. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Who, who opposed? He does. Okay. Motion, motion passes 601. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, thank you for spending some time with me. I, I really want to highlight how closely these numbers are, are aligned with what we were presented with earlier um, in, the, in the year. This, has been, this is the first time in my career as a trustee where the numbers really do add up. And we always got, um, I'm going to use the word excuses, even though I don't know if that's necessarily fair, well, why there was such a swing in the numbers. If, if we are successful um, and if we're being transparent with our, our unions, um, it's because they know that our numbers are real. And I think that's really a compliment to your team. So thank you very much. The second thing I want to um, highlight is the increase in the retirement benefits that the, city, that the state is um, requiring us to pay. I don't have those figures in front of me, but it was a substantial increase every year. Millions, yeah. And I think that I, um, Michelle, and, Michelle and I spoke, and I know that there's been some work at the state level to talk about what the real... Um, to, to change those numbers because it is such a burden on not only us but every district in the state. Absolutely. Um, but I'm glad to see that it seems as if there is a movement now in Sacramento to, to make those, to start to look at it, to make those adjustments. That's really powerful. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you to your financial team, Joe. And if Helen's here, um, thank you. Hi, Helen. How are you? I didn't see you back there. This is really uh, the best report I've seen in a very long time. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, Jeff. I, I agree 100%. Okay, so the motion was passed 601. And on to 9.3, the SELPA annual budget and service plan. Also, um, we had the public hearing at the last meeting. So if anyone would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to improve the annual SELPA budget and service plan. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. And item 9.4, Proposition 51 State Allocation Board Authorized Signatures. And this is a report by CBO Joe Dominguez. All right. Good evening. Um, so this evening I'm very excited to present um, our uh, for Prop 51, the first uh, step in the process is to get district authorization signatory uh, authority for the superintendent and the chief business uh, officer. 
And so this is the um, first step in that process uh, to submit our applications for state eligibility for both for new construction and modernization. Uh, as a district, um, preliminary figures show that we're, uh, it's approximately $30 million for PVUSD. And so we're very excited. Uh, once this is approved, then we can submit our applications and compile the information necessary and submit that to the state. In order to get the money, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> In order to get the money. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Are there any speakers to this item? None. Okay. Any comments or questions from the board? I know this item was of special interest. <clears throat> I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> All right. So, um, so thank you, Joe. So just to remind the general public, Proposition 51 was passed in, it was in November 2016, I think. And it's a state bond to, right. to match districts that already had, my understanding, already had some construction underway, or already had a school bond passed, right? Correct. Um, so we're eligible for matching dollars, which we had hoped for from the very outset. From 2012, we had hoped for matching dollars, but there weren't any from the state nor the feds. So this was a really exciting um, thing, proposition that passed so that we could get some matching dollars. So I was under the impression that we could get about 49% of matching dollars. So we, our school bond is $150 million. Why are we only getting, or why are we only eligible for $30 million? There's different requirements uh, for both new construction and modernization, the age of the building, uh, what we replaced. Uh, it just varies per with its roof replacement, uh, portables, um, the age or condition of the building is also a parameter we have to follow. Another component of that is validating our student enrollment, um, and it breaks it down by subgroup. And so right now we're working in partnership with our SELPA and Heather's leadership and working on our SDC counts. And so that is also a contributing factor. So all that in one is kind of the formula that the state uses that we can qualify. And preliminary numbers are showing right around 30 million. And, uh, but definitely the team that's working on this, we're trying to get those numbers higher. That's great. So does, will this also include our build out of the Pajaro Valley um, High School campus? That's one of the or, things we're, we're currently looking at with the state. Uh -huh. um, various sites do qualify, and there's other doors that, uh, uh, that is currently under review. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I can come back at a later point in time once we get our numbers solidified and be site-specific and the dollar amounts that we could qualify for. That would be great. You're welcome. That would be great. That would be great. A question, Joe. Um, would... Is that money one time or is it ongoing? It, it, it is one time um, and it's also um, throughout the state there are other districts that are pursuing the dollars so it's a limited resource so it's um, uh, first come first serve uh, for the districts that do qualify and so the sooner that we can get our applications in the better position will be and so it's com it's not competitive but there's only a limited amount uh, within the bucket of funding and so we're working very hard to pursue those, but it's one-time funding. One time. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for that answer. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So this is um, an action item. So I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to improve. Second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Um, now we're going to go to 9.7, and then from there we'll go to 9.5. And this is public disclosure of collective bargaining agreement between PVUSD and CSEA. And I believe, Joe, you're on again. All right. So... Um for 9.7, our public disclosure uh, collecting bargaining uh, agreement with CSCA, um, would like to confirm that our district can afford uh, the tentative agreement, and which is a reflect of 2017-18, uh, 3%, which is broken down by 2% contingent on changes to health and welfare benefits, on copays for visits and prescriptions, and a 1% Me Too, clause from 2016-17 uh, 
with PVFT, and then for 1819, uh, a 3%, and then also an adjustment for longevity of a percent increase uh, total. But we are able to uh, afford this uh, package within our multi-year. Um, and as I previously mentioned in our budget presentation, we're working as a district uh, to uh, enhance our internal efficiencies in our multi-year projections. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any speakers to this item? None. Okay. And any questions, comments from the board? Oh, okay. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. I do have a Give comment. Marianne, yeah, I do have a comment. Okay. Go ahead. We're on 9.7, right? Yes. So we got a letter from um, the COE, correct, detailing that we could um, afford this particular um, increase. It did caution, though, however, that we're cutting the budget fairly close to the bone. So, um, so I guess I would... Um, I, I've been a sitting president when the state took back money and we actually had to make some deep, very deep cuts because we weren't prepared for that type of a budget. So I'm just hopeful that we, we I know we've got an extra 3% um, for a rainy day fund, which I think will be very helpful. Um, however, that only covers, you know, a couple of months of payroll. So, um, so I just would like us to, as a district, to be prepared if, but the budget doesn't go our way in the next few years to figure out how we're going to, um, uh, what's the word? Afford. Yeah. Maintain Essentially. Fiscal, fiscal yeah. Well, uh, meet our, meet our um, promises to our labor unions. Yeah, so we're, we're working uh, very diligently internally. Um, as I mentioned in our uh, budget presentation, we have a, um, our multi-year projections that are based on various assumptions. Some of those assumptions that, uh, that we can work on is our enrollment, our average daily attendance, our uh, attendance recovery through Saturday school. Um, and there's other components within our structural deficit and that we talk about internal efficiencies. How do we do um, um, enhance internal policies or procedures and process? Um, so we're working very diligently with the superintendent's office and our staff um, to address that. So we are working very hard on that. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I, I also think, and I, because I think Kim brings up brings up a great point. I also think that we're going to need, if that was to happen, we would need the support of the union that we can count them and say, these are the realities. And we need to work together to make this work. I, I understand that we, we're, we're doing the best we can to save money and and to cut to be more efficient. But at the end of the day, if we don't, if our budgets are cut, and we're transparent and have good reports, as I just spoke about, we're going to have to go to the union and say this is the reality. So we're facing layoffs or whatever it may be. It is a two-way street. Okay. Um, if there's none other. Um, no other comments? I'll entertain them. Oh, we already have a motion and a second, right? Okay. So um, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. I like those seven zeros. Okay. Um, item 9.5 is the agreement with CSEA. So now um, we can stop scrolling past it, Leslie. Welcome, Chona. I'm in my CSEA shirt. Um, President DeRose, board trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, it is great to see our CSA team. Um, we are called the Supergirls. And, and, and a Superman. <laughs> um, and it is especially nice to see our Miss Letty back um, here as well. We're all very excited. And, um, <laughs> the, the bargaining teams at PBUSD and CSCA were very announced that we reached a tentative agreement, which was actually ratified today by 90% of the CSEA. 
Um, the teams were incredibly collaborative, professional, uh, and creative, enabling us to reach an agreement after only four meetings on 11 articles. Um, and it is critical that our superintendent, Dr. Uh, it was critical to our superintendent, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez, President DeRose, our board trustees, to demonstrate our deep appreciation for all of our classified employees' contributions and dedicated work, but at the same time remaining responsible fiscal stewards. Um, we believe that the agreement shows our mutual commitment to uh, working hard to find a resolution that's respectful of our hardworking um, classified team and also while protecting the financial future of the district. Um, the highlights of the agreement include updating contract language to ensure compliance with changes to the laws and regulations and other significant elements as uh, Mr. Dominguez had shared was a 3% salary increase for 2017 to 18. 1% was a Me Too from 2016-17 um, uh, with PVFT and 2% was contingent upon adjustments to uh, the benefits. Um, copay and prescriptions, and a 3% for 2018-19, as well as percentage increases to the longevity stipends. And this is part of the creativity that we had with CSCA. A portion of the salary and longevity increases were offset by adjustments that they made to end the double coverage on medical benefits for cost savings of over $340,000, as well as adjustments to copay prescriptions for all of employees to cover the 2% salary increase for 1718. And the articles that we agree to, all of them, um, Article 3, Organizational Rights, Article 8, Hours and Overtime, Article 9, Leaves, Article um, 13, Evaluations, Article 14, Health and Welfare, Article 15, Pay and Allowances, Article 16, Compensation for Training for our, our drivers, Article 17, um, Grievances, Article 18, Year-Round Education, Article 30, Drug and Alcohol Testing for our Transportation Employees, Article 29, Bilingual Pay, and Article 32, the term, which is a multi-year agreement from July 1, 2008 to June 30th, 2021. Great. Wow. Oh, we did a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot. Do we have, we have any speakers to this no. item? No speakers. Okay. Are there any comments or questions Senator, from the board? I'll give you Senator Mahdi, the future senator. Mm -hmm. Senator. Yeah, Senator, huh? Okay, <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> well, you, you get to hear me twice tonight. <laughs> well, just like Chona said, um, our unit and our negotiating team is very happy with the way that negotiations uh, were carried out. We, it's true, we negotiated just for four sessions, but part of the reason why, unlike in past years, why we, last year, but also this year, we were able to come to an agreement, not quick, but to an agreement at the right moment is because of the trust and the relationship that we have with the district. I definitely agree with Trustee Ursino when, when it comes to the fact that transparency, right? It's a very important thing. And one of the things that as a labor rep, and I represent many districts uh, around this region, one of the issues that I struggle with is when districts are not, or certain individuals are not transparent. And, and I do have to say that this year, PBUSD has shown a lot of transparency with the budget, with the numbers, which is what it has allowed us to come to a middle ground on a lot of the issues, because we know that what you're showing us is the truth. And so I think that a lot of different factors is what has led to us coming to the table, negotiating with Chona, the, and coming to an agreement that both parties um, are happy with. And, and it shows with the fact that we had record turnout today from the membership in the last week of June when half of our members are out of school, they're not here, but a lot of them showed up and 90% of them voted yes for the agreement. So we're happy with where we are and we hope to continue on the same road. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Anybody else? <laughs> no. So does anyone have a comment there or a question? Go. Let me, let me just real, real quick, I just want to uh, remind the board that uh, PVUSD also supports an event that happens every year. July 14th and 15th, we do the Wattsville Relay for Life that's hosted at Wattsville High School. So we encourage you to come on out. It's uh, mainly organized and ran by classified and certificated staff. Uh, right now, we have over 39 teams, and we've raised over 40 um, thousand dollars 
So I hope we get your support and you come on out. Jeff, we saw you on the fifth the Sunday after the event at Cowboys Restaurant. You got to see Diana and I. We were up for like 32 hours. <laughs> and he's like, where are you coming from? And we were at Relay the night before. We start since Friday setting up, and then we finish off at around uh, 10, 11 o'clock on Sunday. So I hope to see you guys all out there and supporting this great event that's sponsored by our grand community. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. I would like to make a motion okay. to ratify the agreement with okay. CSEA. Okay. I'll second. All right. So all um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes 7-0. Congratulations. Congratulations. Enjoy your summer now. <laughs> okay. So item 9.6 is confidential and professional services employee salary increase and um, this is also a report by Dr. Colleen. I'll just stay here. Yes, um, President Rose, um, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, um, reflecting our board's commitment to value the dedication and productive work of all employee groups, both represented and unrepresented, the following increases and in benefit changes are being requested for our confidential and professional services employees, whose compensation was aligned um, to CSEA, reflecting the same total compensation um, salary increases as well as increases to the longevity stipends okay and um, are there any speakers to this item none okay and comments or questions from the board how do you ask him no okay I'm in agreement <laughs> okay then I'll entertain a motion so move I'll second okay all those in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed aye. motion passes six zero one And item 9.8, um, this is uh, asking for approval of an MOU between Santa Cruz Parent Education Nursery School, right, um, of SoCal, Westside, and Santa Cruz, uh, and the Watsonville Aptos Santa Cruz Adult Education. And this is um, a re report from Nancy Bilicich, but I don't see her. Sure. Oh, there she is, okay. Hi, Dr. Bilicich. Good evening. Um, if you recall, I was here probably, I don't know, two months ago. We had the Santa Cruz pens. Um, there was concern about, um, it was number six. And there was a word in there that said, um, Santa Cruz Soquel Westside Penn's advisory board will not require or allow teachers to serve on the board of the Pens. And it goes on. And um, I have since worked with the Santa Cruz Pens. We've worked with the Pens. We've met with Francisco. Um, we've emailed him, talked to him, and he has no concerns with this. So we're asking for your approval tonight. And do we have speakers to this item? None. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Thank you. Go ahead. On, um, uh, on Nancy, on uh, item, item 16, um, if uh, you can turn to that, I think it's on page, page three. Yes. A, um, the uh, reimbursement from PANS to, to the adult ed um, for these items, salaries, hours, et cetera. And I, I don't see management fees in there, and it seems to, and, and my question is, um, when our managers have to go and go to Santa Cruz or whatever, is that time away from our, our own responsibilities here, and is, is are are the those hours countable as reimbursed amounts? Well, we have worked with uh, Santa Cruz. There's no doubt about that. But Santa Cruz has separate funding. This is separate because they collect the fees from the parents, 
and they that's why they reimburse us because they have the money. We don't have, like um, the school at Linscott, the Watsonville Co-op, the parents come in and pay the adult school and we pay the teacher's salary. The pens do it differently, but there is some oversight and the money can be taken out of the Santa Cruz. Uh, we are funded, part of us are funded through the Santa Cruz um, allocation of adult so education. The, so y yes, but um, I guess I'm asking, are our managers getting reimbursed from them or from our own general fund for, for the adult school? I would say we're getting reimbursed from the Santa Cruz um, allocation. So, so what happens if the Santa Cruz allocation is not enough? This is, this is the question that I brought up the last time. Where, where's that liability? If all of these people work for the school district, um, then if, if that source of funding dries up, then I don't want us to be on the hook without knowing about it, you know. I, I agree with you. I think uh, Helen will agree with you. Christine Cota will agree with you. Dr. Rodriguez will tell you not one dime, not one penny goes to Santa Cruz. So the accountability is there, but we have some of our, some of their money pays for our salaries from the, the big allocation. So, so, you know, I, <laughs> I uh, still don't understand this whole concept. If they have the money and they have the staff, why don't they do it? That was an agreement made between the two superintendents and um, uh, it was, I, I don't know what to tell you. It was approved here, and we're doing it. Well, well, I mean, I th well, well, I think that if I had been more, more, more on the ball, then I think I would have been able to look at this a little bit differently than just, and, and then ask some of the, questions that I'm asking now. I know it's probably late, but I don't want to be in, in the spot later if we have to cut the budget for anything down the road. Um, so I just want to make sure that our liabilities are laid out there. Right now, adult education budget is, is pretty secure. Um, with the new budget, the governor has given a little more allocation for adult education all the way around. But anything can happen with budgets, as you know. And I think what would happen is if we see that we don't have enough funding for Santa Cruz, then we'll start cutting positions in Santa Cruz. I mean, that's, that's what happens. Okay, so, so uh, let me just play that out for a minute. If, if, a, uh, if a teacher from Santa Cruz has seniority and we have to cut employees, will they be able to bump our own Watsonville um, people here. <clears throat> That's um, a, an MOU that was um, that we're still talking about. I've worked with uh, Chona a lot on that, and Dr. Rodriguez too, of how it's stated, the paragraphs, what was approved, how it was signed off, but we don't believe that our people would be in jeopardy. So if I if I may, so. You know, this agreement was done prior to my arrival, so um, so we we did have this question the last time. Um, they are now our employees, and separating from them at this point would cause much more damage than it would good at this point. Um, I will say that we fought to get the additional percentage that um, Dr. Bilicic is talking about, so that is helpful. Um, adult ed is, um, even with the raise, which was a pretty significant raise for their staff, they are living within their means. Um, currently, we are going over the interpretation of that MOU. Um, the question about whether or not they are seen as two distinct service areas or if they're seen as one. If they are seen as two distinct areas, the benefit to that is that then if it came to layoffs, those layoffs would happen separately. 
and not combined. Um, there is some benefits of seeing it as one complete service area versus two separate. Um, but we're, we're currently working through PVFT. I will say that, and we just received word even today, that additional funding is going to be allocated even more above adult ed. We just received another 23,000, I believe it was. Um, and so um, we're continuing to receive additional monies because the state is supporting it at this time. Um, we would go through the March 15th layoff process if we could not afford the program, either side. What I, what, what, what I think concerns me also is the underlying fact that this, the, the program seems to, be a pro, seems to be its own district within the district, that Basically, it says that the imp that the teachers are employees of the school district. We have never seen them the uh, names on the on the uh, list that we approve for payment. And and if I asked you right now, where are the where are the files for employees? Are they in our HR department, or do they have their own HR department? No, they're they're in PVUSD. The files are here in PVUSD. They are now, but prior to us asking, they, they, they were not. When the employees came, the files came with them. Have, have, they, have, have those names ever been presented to the board for payment? For payment? I think, well, I, you know, don't you, don't you do payroll every month? They're, they're on those lists, if that's what you're inquiring about. They're in the warrant reports. So in they're, the, in, they're in the warrants. I think what he's asking is, are they included on the classified or, or certificated employee reports that we get in closed session? Am I That's, correct? Yes. Are they included in those lists? Yes. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them listed as, as uh, SoCal or wherever they're from. Well, there are employees, so it wouldn't be listed as SoCal. They would have a title. What title would they have on that list? Um, when we do the certificated and classified personnel reports, those are only changes like new um, people coming, promotions, et cetera. Um, what we can do is um, submit a uh, roster, um, which uh, Adult Ed has already put together for that, that shows the combination of both sides. They've already put together one, I believe it was 24 teachers and um, two, three classified employees that came from uh, Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz. But we can go ahead and, and, and send that roster um, for your um, review. Okay. So uh, on the certificated report where they would be listed mm -hmm. that we get enclosed, what would their title be? Because um, I think that's what's, what is sure. the confusion is we, we don't know how to see which ones they are. It, it would be the job that they're doing. For example, on the certificated report, they would be teachers. Okay. Um, and on the classified report, it is um, just as we do with every other site. Okay. Um, so the office, um, uh, you know, administrative assistant. Whatever uh, their title is. No special is. designation. Yeah. A, aside from what we typically do. Does the pres that president. Yes. Uh, sorry. Um, so if you look at um, what we approved in closed session um, tonight, um, they are on there. Um, so if you look at the actual document that is on for certificated, um, it shows the new hires on there. And there are two for adult education on there that it specifies the site. And, um, and so one, they're, they're on there. Um, okay. So yeah. um, okay. we just provide them. Yeah. I think that, does that satisfy your... Your question. Oh, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, still waiting for the clarification about management management time. We we have a director. We have an assistant director. How much time is being allocated to be responsible for this program, and is that taken away from responsibilities of our larger program here? So, so you will remember that we did bring forward several months ago now a coordinator that would be funded out of the Santa Cruz um, funds, adult education funds. It was pulled, so or I'm not sure if it was pulled or, or denied. I believe it was pulled. 
Um, and um, so we still do believe that um, we are doing additional administrative work that should be covered by the funds um, that are Santa Cruz um, adult education funds. Um, and so at that time, because of negotiations, it was not seen as the right time to do that. There also was questions about whether we could still afford it after this PINS issue. The PINS issue has now been rectified, meaning it's been fixed. Um, and um, we do believe that there still is the funding source out of adult education money to do a coordinator position, which would allow us to continue to focus on our Watsonville and Aptos programs. So, so it is forward. encroaching. Um, no, we have no encroachment. No, no that's not. The, so what is happening is their time is being dispersed away from the Watsonville area. It's encroaching on their time. Not yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I mean. um, yes. Yeah, one of the one of the reasons that I'm asking these things now, uh, because I in in um, Jeff's concern, as is mine, is that we lived through the uh, budget cuts of a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and when revenue, when the general fund re revenue is reduced, then we have to make cuts along the way. And if 87% if, uh, of, our, if, of our funding goes to salaries and benefits, there's only 13% to run other programs. And if, the, and if we have to encroach into that 13 percent, then we then then I think the last time time that we went through this, we got a lot of pushback from adult ed and other um, activities of don't cut us, you know, it, and it puts us into a bad situation because now it's one program versus the other, and so I just want to avoid that, you know. And, and I think it's realistic for us to think ahead and plan for the worst. It, Hope for the best and plan for the worst. So whatever that's If you is. recall, we had um, funding at that time that was basically in the general fund, and the board took um, a large portion of adult education funds to, quote, take care of the district in various programs. However, at this point, it's very separate. Adult education has changed from what it was then. So I don't think adult education would get into the general fund, um, or I don't, think you, I don't think you can just take the money to fund other programs now because the funding is so different. It's but different. I, but but I, and I, and I, understand, I, I understand what you're saying, Nancy. Would you speak into the mic? I'm sorry. I understand what Nancy's saying um, about it about, you know, I think we took a couple million dollars from you, if memory serves. Well, at close the time. to uh, probably three. Um, but I, I also think we're, we, my personal opinion is this was a commitment that was made by our former superintendent who was acting as super, who was a superintendent at that time. So we, we have a responsibility to see it through. However, it, 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 it is unsettling to me, and I didn't think about this, so maybe I'm still not on the ball, but it is unsettling to me that we are, we're bringing more people. We're bringing more teachers onto our payroll, if you as it, as it were. And yet we have people who've been working in our Watsonville and Aptos schools for thirty. For they're working here. And if we had to do layoffs, some of these people who haven't been with the district except for this agreement are now being are now being faced with would be would be faced with layoffs. The, and what concerns me is that whenever I hear we're talking about a contract and say, well, we're going to talk. We'll talk about that later. We're working on that. I really would like to see these types of issues ironed out before the board votes on it. Again, my opinion is that we, the prior superintendent made a commitment. I, I believe it was voted on by the board at the time, so we need to follow through with that. But I think it's very fair to ask these questions. And it's not just about adult education. It's about a precedent moving forward, in my opinion. I think this is highly unusual. I don't, I don't know of any other district where it's happened um, because in fact, in our district, I don't know of any other, I mean, we're going past our district boundaries. But that was an agreement with the two superintendents and the two boards. And um, this is where we are. And there are some things that are not clear that we are still trying to work out in the MOUs. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions? Kim? 
Can you, uh, and I think I asked this last time, and I'm sorry if I forgot, but can you outline the benefits to Pajaro Valley Unified for having this collaboration or this MOU? Because we have, we do have, I don't know if jurisdiction's the right word, but there is, we are now serving at all the adult school too in the Santa Cruz area, and this feels like an offshoot of that. What we now have, you now have, the entire county of Santa Cruz has adult education through you. Basically, that's it. I mean, we have the whole, the whole county. And um, Santa Cruz would like us to continue to expand in various areas there, like San Lorenzo Valley, like Scotts Valley, like Boulder Creek, like Davenport. I mean, they have a vision, too. And it's our vision to try and continue to expand. Um, and so having these kids sort of under our umbrella, is there any extra benefit that we get? Can we apply for extra nutrition dollars or extra ADA in any way or extra grants in any direction? Is there any true benefit to having more kids under our umbrella? It's okay if the answer is no. I'm just curious. <laughs> You don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Our superintendent's at a loss for words. I think I am too. No, it's just, you know, I mean, we've expanded and people look to us for a direction for the whole county. It's very different. Our role is different. But um, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know it, all of the ins and outs as to why Santa Cruz decided to do what they did. But the two superintendents got together and that's what they thought was best for the county. And and we were told, here we go. Okay, well, I mean, I support early childhood education. I think these type of cooperative preschools are very important to communities, mm -hmm. and in particular to working parents who take advantage of adult school classes. So I would actually support this today. Thank you. So that's, that's what I have to say. If, if nothing else, I mean, we're providing a community service. Right. Where, where other school districts decided to opt out. So I think for us, um, it's, I see you, Willie, just a second. <laughs> I, I think for us, it's, it's good that um, we can provide this service, but as long as there's no Financial. negative side for us. Go ahead, Willie. Thank you. Um, on uh, item, item four, Nancy, I, I uh, read this, and I think the lights went on for me, and I said, wait, this basically it says, Said parent nursery is not nor is intended to be a, um, a district-operated child care center. It has, it has little, literally nothing to do with kids. This is, this is a program through adult ed to be able to teach parents parenting skills, right? It, right. Right, so it's, so it's actually not a, not a program for child care centers or for children it's but for mainly, adults. But it's for adults. Right. And they bring their children there and they learn parenting skills through um, the adult education program. It is a cooperative preschool. Yes. Yes. So there are, it is a preschool program. Yes. It's just it's a co-op. It's the lab. Yeah, it's the lab. Yeah. The co-op lab. Which is so neat. It's parent participation. You know, but... Well, you know, you know, you know, it's getting late, and uh, you know, I know that we wanted to be out here by eight o'clock, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, <laughs> but it's, um, um, I didn't say that. no, <laughs> but, but the real reality is that we're in the business for children first, and this program, while it may be wonderful for parents to learn their parenting skills, has nothing to do with our Watsonville children in a child care center not at all I, I, so it's my opinion that if we are um, providing training for parents um, it's going to result in students who are more thank you more prepared for school um, so I think there is a benefit. It may not be direct, but there, there is a benefit to the kids because they're going to reap the benefits from good parenting. So um, 
if there is there more discussion, I would like to call for a motion. I was just going to chime in and agree with the same thing that you just said. I mean, if we are helping to educate young parents to train up their children, that benefits our school district and our community as a whole. No, because... Yes, because if they are getting the skills to teach to their children and to bring their children up instead of being lagged, but they're that not is our children. They're not our families. They are now. That's a decision that's been expressed repeatedly that both past superintendents and past boards already voted it. It's a done deal. We're, we're, it's the same conversation. This is where we are today. And as we've heard Dr. Rodriguez say, if you were to try to dismantle this and tear it apart today, it would do more harm than good. That's it. I just wanted to say really quickly, so I agree that then Jeff. I agree that we probably need to hire that person that we screwed up on and we didn't hire before, since you have a lot more work to do in this whole county that <laughs> this person can help in that part of the county to be able to so that you can work more on this part of the county. So I would agree with it. you probably need to come back with that position to help benefit you in the whole county is what I would say. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, so you need to do that. Um, and I think uh, parenting co-ops with parents and children are the best kind of a preschool that you can have. Um, you know, I work with migrant Head Start, and they have this incredible parenting program with all these um, classes for the parents, you know, for the parents, you know, in Migrant Parent Head Start, which goes through infants to five-year-old. You know, and it's incredible what, the, what they're, the work that they do with the parents. I mean, it's wonderful, it's incredible. So the fact that you in, you know, in the Santa Cruz part of the, in SoCal are working together with the parents, I think that's wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to approve this item. Thank you. Is there a second? I'm a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes to seven zero. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Georgie got to me. <laughs> so we're a good, healthy board discussion is always a good thing, right? Um, as long as it's not eleven o'clock at night. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, okay. We're at item nine point nine, and this is approved student placement agreement with with Cal State East Bay. And this is Dr. Colleen again. Yes, thank you, um, President DeRose, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. This action item reflects our board's and our superintendent's desire to build capacity, promote professional growth, and recruit and promote our employees from within our own district. We're hoping to place future counselor and psychologists and student, and student placement positions at our schools. And kudos to Director Suzanne Smith, uh, for working with Cal State University in, uh, East Bay to implement a student placement program with PVSD for clinical school counseling and school psychology. And the term of the agreement is five years from May 31st, 2018 to December 21st, 2023. Okay. Where, are, where is that? Thank you. Are there any speakers to this item? None. Okay. Is there any board discussion questions? Okay. It's excellent. Yes. Let's it's, vote. It's a good thing. Yeah, let's vote for um, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I'll second this item. Okay. So Maria and Karen, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the item is good too. <laughs> 9.10, approve internship contract agreement with Brandman University. Dr. Colleen? Uh, yes, President DeRose, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, kudos to our new HR Certificated Director, Allison Neozawa, and our HR team um, for working closely with universities in recruitment efforts to fill certificated teaching positions. Um, university and college interns provide a reliable and motivated source of new hires for our vacancies, and the attached internship contract um, agreement with Brandman University continues our collaboration with that college in efforts to provide support and supervision of interns and the placement of those interns at our schools for the following credentials. Um, multiple subject internship credentials, single 
subject internship credentials and education specialist internship credentials. And the intern credentials meet the highly qualified requirements under the National um, No Child Left Behind Act, which is now Every Student Succeeds Act. Thank you. Do we have speakers to this item? None. Okay. And are there any comments or questions from the board? Yes, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, so is this like an online program or what type of program is Brandman? Um, it's a combination. They do some online and they do some classroom. Um, and, and part of what um, the internship is is they need to do some um, uh, practicum, which is actual um, teaching and placement in classrooms. Okay. So if we're recruiting the best and the brightest teachers to this to Pajaro Valley Unified, I would like to see internship um, agreements with some universities that have a better reputation than Brandman. And I understand that for many people, like an online program is um, the only thing they can do because they have to work. But I'm just wondering, we've got so many other amazing programs in the general area. Why can't we have something with UC Berkeley or Stanford or some other programs? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, we have something with CSUMB, yes. right, for psychology or... Yeah. Um, and we have, um, if you look at the consent agenda, we do have student placement programs with CSUMB. We have internship placement with them and um, UC Santa Cruz. So it's a variety of uh, different colleges that we're working with. This is just a continuation for Brandman. There's Santa Clara. I mean, we have so many good universities right here around us. I just would like to see us sort of up our caliber. I mean, I understand Cal State, East Bay, but I mean... I don't know. It seems like there are other universities that we could partner with that would give us really very high quality employees. And we do partner with a lot of the CSU schools um, as well as UC Santa Cruz with these programs and we are working to continue to expand them. Just want to comment on something. For the past six years that I've been on the board. This is actually one of the first years that I've seen so many collaboration going on. So I know that was one of my, wanted to make sure that I got done because because uh, it was constantly just the same two institutions. So I'm actually really glad to see that we're expanding and building those partnerships. Um, and hopefully we're able to expand um, even more. So thank you for all the work that's been going into, yeah. Thank you. And so with that, I would like to uh, make a motion to approve this item. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes 7-0. Great. And we're now at 9, 9.11. Um, Well-timed because we now have our, um, this is a approval of the program facilities and service agreement with PV. USD and PVPSA, and um, our executive director, um, Erica Padilla Chavez, just walked in. So, so um, Erica is going to have me start it, and if there are specific questions that can't be answered, then then we'll move forward with it. So, this is an agreement, of course, um, as we mentioned before. PVPSA has been a significant partner with us. Um, not only on a daily basis with our students, but also when we have um, times of needs, whether it was with the immigration issue, immigration issues with our parents, or it was with um, death of students. Um, they always come and they really partner with us and provide us a level of support that our social emotional counselors are not licensed to do. So our, our social emotional counselors, um, due to their um, credentialing, they can do a certain level of support, and then PVPSA is the ones that really come in and, and sometimes do support um, not only of our students, but also of our staff when we have a significant issue. So this is the agreement for the upcoming school year, and you can see um, that it highlights um, the seven areas in which they support. Um, so it's everywhere from the secondary student assistance program, which they're in all the schools, to our kids' corner at the elementary, the Valor program that supports all of our students um, that are highly at-risk students, like our, our expelled students. Um, they do provide specific um, support to our charter programs. 
our seasonal Head Start programs, and um, also the um, Watsonville High School is contracting with them using site funds for some additional supports as well. They also, um, we do provide them um, our two pay program, and so they do all the requirements and all the support for the tobacco um, use prevention education. And then although it's um, reimbursed um, to, uh, from them to us, um, they also, we now do starting this year, the first five Monterey County services, which is in um, Pajaro, which is a very um, needy population. And so we're, we're glad that we're able to provide services. And then number seven is really what I had mentioned before is um, we have full access to them for programs and activities um, when we need support. Um, and so um, Erica, um, I call her frequently and every single time she um, comes um, to our aid and really provides us the staffing that we need. And, um, and so I am recommending um, the agreement so that we can continue the work that um, was started um, many, many years ago. Great, thank you. Do we have any speakers to this item? None. Okay. Any questions, comments from the board? I just, Aaron. I just want to say um, I'm I'm so glad about the first five Monterey County services. Um, my district is Las Lomas and Pajaro, and it's and it's been such a left out area of Monterey County. I mean, there is. There is no support for anything for them. I mean, you know, they lack so much over there. I mean, really. You know, they've just like, Monterey County is just like, you know, we don't care about <laughs> this section of <laughs> our county for some reason. They've just left them, you know, like. So for me, um, this is just really super important. And um, I'm glad Migrant Education is doing a something, something there too with the, um, with the library there, they're going to do kind of a program in Pajaro for the library there. They're going to be doing, you know, I read about that too. That sounds really good too. But yeah, I'm so glad there's d you were doing more for th that part of the county. That part of, yeah, Las Lomas and Pajaro. Thank you, Karen. Good evening. My name is Erica Padilla Chavez, and I'm the director at PVPSA. Thank you, Karen, for highlighting the work in Pajaro. Um, it's absolutely true that it is a region of our district that um, has a lot of complications, namely due because it does reside in the jurisdiction of Monterey County. We serve as that bridge uh, between the river, mm -hmm. um, and we ensure that the mental health services that the kids need on that side of the bridge are um, able to be provided. But this particular agreement I'm super excited about because this is a whole new way of PVPSA and the school district working together where we're really collaborating. It's not just us providing the services and then the school district doing their thing. We're really partnering. The work with Migrant Ed, this is new. Um, and we're really excited about that because now we're going to bring in Migrant Ed to that whole first five environment. We'll get to build a relationship with them. We'll get, they get to know us, we get to know them. So we're really, really excited. Data shows that when you start with the zero to five population, there's probably going to be uh, greater returns on our investment. So we're really excited that there seems to be a lot more energy from first five California to invest in these types of programming. Yeah, thank you. It's such a forgotten area. <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay, anybody else? Hi, Erica. Thanks Hi, for all Kim. your great work. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, I was curious, have we ever received any funding from the, um, is it the Pajaro Health Trust? The Pajaro Health Trust, yes. Uh, well, they, they funded PVPSA. Last year we got funded by them to provide emergency counseling support to students who um, needed counseling services because of the immigration fears. Yeah. So you remember how that yeah. really became a topical point last year. Um, we were able to just respond to kids who needed our support using that Pajaro Valley Health Trust funding. They tend to want to spread the love around. It's not that they have a lot of money to give, so they tend to fund one agency one year, and then they'll fund a different agency the following year. And I can respect that. There's a lot of agencies that need support. And so we're not funded this year by them but we'll reapply next year. Um, one of the things that I'm working on at Dignity is to improve our services for um, maternal health. 
Mm. There's a lot of postpartum depression out there, and I'm just yeah. wondering if you guys would consider doing a group for postpartum. I'd love to discuss that. Um, we could do lactation and postpartum, but anyway, that's a different topic. We can definitely okay. talk about that. I'm, I'm happy to report I am a board member of Dignity Health. Uh, we are starting to build a relationship <laughs> with Dignity Health. Uh, so it's interesting that you're bringing that up. Let's explore that. We'd love to yeah, explore that. Yeah, it's actually, um, it, there's a big push um, across the enterprise to, that. to uh, do this. And there's not really any services right now in South County I, that's for true. that population. So that that's is why true. I'm putting it on Let's talk. Way. Okay, I'll thank talk you. Talk to Mickey. Well, I, you know, I'm a huge supporter, right? Thank you, Liz. <laughs> so thank you for everything that you do. And, and I just want to... Um, remind people that the great work that they do um, with our students, it, it actually contributes to them attending school more often. They're better at school because they're getting the support that they need. So this has a, a real ripple effect throughout um, our community and families are healthier, kids are healthier, and we, we, um, we can see the, the difference, especially in our expulsion rates. Um, suspension and expulsion rates have uh, significantly dropped since the Valor program has um, has come into play. So, okay. So I would like to, um, I think I would like to make the motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. And our next item is... Um, approval of a special board meeting closed session and this is on the superintendent's evaluation this is something that the board um, uh, we do on an annual basis so um, we are scheduling this for what is it august 8th 8th for august 8th so um someone like to make a motion to add this to the can i ask one question the calendar. first Yes. Um, what was the reason for having to create um, a special study session for this, that it couldn't be conducted in closed session on the July 25th meeting? Our closed session agenda is um, oftentimes very packed, and this is an opportunity for the superintendent to do um, sort of a mini state of the district, um, uh, show the work that she's done as it aligns with the board goals, so it usually does take some time but it's a really good opportunity for the board and the superintendent to have um, those conversations and really look at the at the work product that's coming out of the superintendent's office but we do reconvene if needed after public session to close session if necessary this is just one no but i'm one saying meeting it's just if, one closed session meeting so we right but i'm saying if on the july 25th meeting if that wasn't sufficient time between the six and seven o'clock hour we do reconvene back to closed session Yes. After public session, uh -huh. if necessitated. So that was an option. Mm. It's not typically how the board has done it. So, right? Yes. So, in, in the past, we ran into that problem whether it is because board meetings really run late and so forth that we decided to do it this way. Um, to just to allow uh, more time for the board to ask questions, to give feedback. And I think as uh, the superintendent is our one employee, and I think that we need to invest the time needed to ensure um, that she knows um, areas that she needs to um, improve on, as well as areas that we're very happy with. Um, so providing that one-on-one -on -one feedback, I think, is very beneficial. As a board of trustees, she's one of our the only employee, and I think that time needs to be dedicated. Is there any other discussion, trustees or I, I, I would just I would agree with that. I understand we can come back later, but this is this is such an important piece of what we do as a, a board to really uh, provide feedback to Michelle that to do it at. 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, I don't think serves the district well. We really need to carve some time out, sit down with her, hear what she has to say in, in terms of her achievements, and then give her feedback in terms of what she did great and what she can do differently next time. Okay. And so with that, I would like to make a motion to approve this item. Second. Okay, Jeff seconds. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Six zero one. And this uh, item 9.13 is approve a date change 
for a special study session that we had scheduled for November 28th. I believe um, we're moving it now to December 5th because I believe that's the night before the CSBA conference in San Francisco and many of us um, need to get to the city to be ready for the conference bright and early in the morning. So um, with that, I'd, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Let's see, I also have just one question on this one. Um, because of, given the nature that we're in an election year and there could potentially be the makeup of a new board, I just questioned that this was being put to December 5th instead of January when there's a potential that there could be a new sitting board. So how, I mean, if it's really benefiting an outgoing, potentially an outgoing board. Mm. Is there any other comments on that? Might be worth a discussion. Is there any reason why we could have do it to in have that January? In because in January we also have only one meeting. What is the special study session about again? Refresh my memory. Student services and social emotional support. I agree with George on that. I think that if there is a new board sitting, they could really, for example, it frankly, I'm not going to, you know, I'll have five days left of my term. So I think that there's an, there's an opportunity for any new board members to sit and learn from this. This may be, it may be wise to, it is wise to put this off for a month. Other board members? I think I would agree with that, too. Okay. I'm okay yeah. with that. It's a good point. Good suggestion. Thank you. Okay, so we're pulling it then. Is that correct? Well, does the agenda the January? Well, we can't set January's schedule yet. We do that in December, right? Yeah, so we will pull this item then. And then the um, newly elected board or re-elected um, will decide on the date. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that I'll say is that um, these particular item, this particular item, um, student services and social emotional support is near and dear to my heart. I feel like since I've been on the board, we've made major changes to our policies and procedures regarding how we serve kids. We used to be sort of a school to prison pipeline with all the kids that we used to expel. And we've made like a gigantic change in that, I think, as a result of the board looking into it and, and asking for something different. Um, so so uh, while I'm in agreement with this moving to January, I feel a sense of sorrow that I want, you know, potentially if, if I don't get elected that I wouldn't be there to, to hear the presentation. But can the public come anyway? Open okay, <laughs> so maybe I can still come. Okay. <laughs> it's open, so. Okay, thank you. Great. So, 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 so is it the idea that we wait for the uh, new board to come in to evaluate the superintendent is that no 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 we're on the next is item. the <coughs> special study session Willie huh 913 oh, 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 oh excuse me I I was looking at the Nine superintendent's twelve. evaluation no <laughs> erase all that no, I said that hold on just one moment Oh, okay, okay. So um, what I'm looking for then is a motion to remove the November 28th special study session. Okay, a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes. <laughs> it's six symbolic. Zero to one. <laughs> Do it. That's okay. You gotta it's make symbolic. Your <laughs> symbolic. Okay. It's a symbolic no. <laughs> okay. So moving on to the consent agenda, um, are there any motions or um, requests for deferrals? I was going to defer, but I don't think he's here from Migrant Education. He's not here, right? Oh, the Red shirt in the back. <laughs> oh, there he is, way in the back. So what What number is that, Karen? You know, I, I brought a little sheet that I was going to ask all these questions with, and I lost the sheet. Let me find it. I was going to defer. What number is that, Karen? It's the one about the, it's the, one about the, um, the library. I don't know what number that is. Okay. So we will pull item 10.4. Uh, 10. 10. There it is. Yes, 10.4. And um, with that item, hold. Hey, you. Somebody <laughs> like here. to make, hold on, Karen. 
Okay. Would someone like to make a motion <laughs> to approve the consent without that item? I'll Move make a approval. motion. Okay. No, you can make a motion. That's okay. A second? <laughs> I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Okay, Karen. Item 10.4. Come here. <laughs> wow, I didn't think you were here. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, in, 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 um, in uh, the PVBS, Erica is talking about how they're going to collaborate with you, too. Um, and just talk to me a just a little bit more how that program is going to work in Pajaro, because that's my place, that's my area, too. Um, you know, the work that you're going to do there. Yeah. Uh, Monterey County Free Libraries. Yeah. yeah that's through the uh, pre-K program, the uh, master's program. The, uh, we'll be doing that for quite a few years. The uh, We use the uh, Pajaro Library to be able to... Uh, provide services to the Pajaro Valley, um, to the Pajaro side of the uh, uh, PBUSD to provide right. pre-K services. The, uh, we um, have a contract with the uh, library to be able to have uh, pre-K services and as well as ESL services, um, which we're actually so working. So you work with parents too and, yes, and the Yes, yeah, we provide pre-K and the, through adult ed, they, they provide an adult ed teacher that provides ESL services to adults as well. Okay, and then, but you also have a, you actually have a preschool program. Yes, actually and it's too. been happening for quite a few years. Yeah, oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. I'm so glad you're doing that. The for, it's, like I said, it's a forgotten area. <laughs> All right, thank you so much okay. for doing that. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are, are there any other questions or comments? Kim? Hmm. Um, just on some of the items, but not for. Okay, oh, we did already we passed yet? the consent agenda. Oh. We're on the deferred now, the next item. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say something about a couple of the deferred items. It's just a comment, quick one. Okay, so <laughs> let's pass this first. Okay. Okay, so I'll do I have a motion. a motion? Thank you. A second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0, and go ahead and make your comments. <laughs> this is my quick comments. I was very happy to see that the contractors that we're using on um, our projects at Aptos Junior High and Aptos High um, are local contractors, so I want to thank um, our staff for ensuring that we're using our local contractors and labor. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay. Closed session, we do not have to reconvene, so we will go ahead and go to item 13, which is action on closed session. Trustee Osmondson? Let me just do this. Yeah, the one expulsion, and then Maria will do the yeah. rest of the items. Okay. <clears throat> I move to approve the recommendation of the administrative panel or a suspended expulsion for the remainder of 2017-2018 school year and the fall semester of 2018-2019 school year for 17-18-040. Okay, is there a second? A second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 7-0. Trustee Roscoe? Yeah, under item 2.2, .2, I move to approve the um, certificated personnel report as presented by the district administration with the addition of two admin appointments. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. I do want to highlight uh, who those uh, the two administrative appointments. So congratulations to Brooke Hoppent uh, for being promoted to principal at um, HA High Elementary School. Brooke received her master's degree in educational leadership from San Jose State University, teaching credential from UC Santa Cruz with a BA from San Jose State. She has served the students at Pajaro Valley since 1999, starting as an elementary teacher and reading literacy coach at Ansoldo Elementary, and was promoted to Radcliffe Elementary as an academic coordinator. The second appointment um, is Todd Michael, 
now our academic coordinator at Hall District Elementary School. Todd received his BA and master's from UC Santa Cruz. He has been serving our PUSD students since 2012 as a teacher at Calabasas Elementary, summer school principal at Brentley Elementary, and is currently the after school uh, program coordinator at Calabasas Elementary. So I want to highlight uh, that these are all promotions within our district. Um, and it's always great to see that. So thank you, Chona, and your team. So with that, uh, moving on to item 2.3, I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by the district administration with the addition of two promotions. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Under item 2.4, the Board of Trustees approved a settlement agreement and release with a, with a classified employee number 5458 with a 502 vote. Under item 2.7, um, the Board approved a final compromise and release agreement for one special education student with a 70 vote. And under item 2.8, um, the board also approved a final settlement agreement and release for one special education student with a 601 vote. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, item 14 is upcoming board meetings. July 11th will be a special study session again, and I know I had that up here. And that is for on budget. So study session on our budget. So should be um, really entertaining. Hopefully we'll get a lot of public there so they can see how we, yes. The, uh, special, the uh, special uh, study session for the uh, superintendent's evaluation, when is that gonna be? August 8th. Good, thank so you. So July 11th, we'll have one on the budget. August 8th, we'll be superintendent. Okay, good, thank okay. you. Okay, and with that, I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thanks for being here.